we've introduced the resource, let's get into introducing some of our key topics and having a look at how it is that we're able to provide this sexual health information to the young people in our lives or the young people in our care. Just a show of hands, who here has children? Yep, who here has young people in their lives that are important to them? All of us, that's exciting. <laughs> who has taught their child or a significant young person in their life how to swim? Most of us. If you had a young person in your care, would you teach them how to swim? Yes, <laughs> great. I want you to think about why you're teaching that young person how to swim. Why are we teaching children in Australia how to swim? Shout some things out for me. So they survive. So they survive. Yep. Because we're girt by sea. Because <laughs> as our anthem says, girt by sea. Absolutely. We are a nation where there is a lot of water surrounding us. We're in the beautiful Illawarra. There's Lake Illawarra. We have oceans and beaches quite close by. And there's also lots of lakes and dams. We know that it's a life skill to be able to swim and hence survive. So I want you to think about this for a moment and take a look at our swimming pool picture if it helps to you know, take you to the place. I want you to think about swimming. What if swimming was something that we didn't speak about? We didn't talk to our young people about swimming because swimming's kind of secret adult business. Young people don't really need to know how to swim. Probably not until they're about 16. Young people might sneak to the back of the library at school and find a book on swimming, the art of swimming. They might even walk past the community pool or the beach and hear people having a great time, see people in bikinis, board shorts and think, hmm, I wonder what that's all about. But we never talk to them about swimming. Then, on their 16th birthday, we take them to the local pool and we unlock the gate and we let them go and jump right in. What's going to happen for a lot of those young people? They're going to drown. Miraculously, some of them will naturally learn it by themselves and survive. But a majority of those young people going into that pool are going to drown. So I now want you to think about that swimming pool as a cesspit of sexual health, relationship and self-esteem conversations. If we're not having those conversations with young people until they turn 16, and the age of 16 will become relevant in a moment, if we're not having those conversations until they're 16, what's going to happen? They're going to find out that they can legally do things. They're going to go out and experiment and they may not necessarily know how to protect themselves best or how to look after themselves. So whilst they're not actually going to drown, you can see the analogy of finding yourself caught up in situations where you think, I actually, I'm really struggling here. I don't know how to get my head above water. I don't know how to deal with these complex situations that are coming my way. So you'll see why this becomes important throughout the presentation. Always think back to that swimming pool and you've taught your young people how to swim or you've acknowledged that if you had a young person in your care, it's an important skill. I want us to now think about why would I not do the same when it comes to educating my young person around sexual health, around drug and alcohol, around mental health. It's incredibly important to make sure that they can swim their way through the journey of life.